I'm Taron Marlar, and this is your daily dose of weird dark news. From ScaryCarries.com, Officer Pulls Over Couple Minutes Before Fatal Crash Traffic stops are never a pleasant experience, but once in a while we catch a break and the fear of insurance rates going up is replaced with a stern warning. For most people, getting pulled over means taking extra care with the act of driving, and for cops, that is the intended result. But there are also instances where an officer with the best of intentions can inadvertently overlook an impending risk resulting in dire consequences. That's exactly what happened for one cop. According to the officer, in addition to excessive speeding, running a red light, and nearly hitting the officer's patrol car, the driver almost struck someone riding a bicycle. I'm stopping you for reckless driving, he explained to the couple in the car. Despite the laundry list of traffic violations, the officer took pity on the young couple who claimed to be on their first date. He only issued the driver three citations and even disregarded the fact that the man was illegally driving with a provisional license. Almost killing each other's no way to start on the first date, he said as the passenger apologized profusely. That chilling assertion would have much more meaning in the minutes that followed. He sent the young couple on their way, telling the pair to get home safe. Just 14 minutes later, body cam footage showed that same officer arriving at the scene of a fatal crash between a very familiar car and a semi-truck. This is the same kid. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! The officer said, clearly recognizing the vehicle and the occupants from his traffic stop just minutes earlier. According to the forensic expert that went over the event, the vehicle was driving at 124 miles per hour, and the passengers experienced upper torso amputation. He was 24, she was 27. Though the officer was not injured, he was put into an ambulance, likely for psychological evaluation, with the understanding of how greatly something like this could impact his mental and well-being. From UnexplainedMysteries.com Police in Slovakia Catch Dog in Driver's Seat of Moving Vehicle In a recent Facebook post, the Slovak police force detailed the peculiar case of a brown hunting dog that was photographed sitting behind the wheel of a moving car. When approached, the driver of the vehicle tried to claim that the dog had simply jumped up on his lap, but the police officers investigating the case were unconvinced. An irresponsible driver who was stopped by a patrol for speeding in the village of Starusi finally had something to explain, the department wrote. A 31-year-old man from District Piaz Delaney claimed that the Havino suddenly jumped over his knees. However, the last footage did not record sudden movement in the car. Sinise police imposed a block fine on the spot for violating traffic rules. When transporting a dog, take care of the safety of the animal and the entire crew in the car. Even a small animal can endanger your life and health while driving. From the New York Post Drunk Ohio Dad Arrested at Son's High School Homecoming Dance A drunk Ohio dad was arrested for trying to come to his son's rescue at a homecoming dance after the teen was involved in an altercation. Stephen Stevens was taken into custody Saturday after ignoring orders from a school resource officer holding his 18-year-old son and others in custody while waiting for Anderson High School officials to dole out punishments to the bickering teens. The officer at the scene said that while he was waiting for an assistant principal to arrive, an intoxicated Stevens confronted him and tried to take his son away. Stevens was demanding that I, the officer, explain why his son was being illegally detained, the arrest report read. Stevens continued to demand that he take his son, so I told him he needed to leave. When Stevens refused to go, the officer said, he tried escorting the dad away from the school building, but he refused to go. The officer noted that Stevens' breath smelled of alcohol and that his speech was slurred. The cop then wrestled Stevens to the floor and arrested him at the school, according to the criminal complaint. Principal Kyle Fender said in a letter to parents that the arrest took place near a group of students waiting to be picked up from the dance. No staff members were involved in the incident, as it was handled by the Hamilton County Sheriff's Office, which provided the building its school resource officers. Due to the nature of the incident, we are limiting how much information we can share," Fender wrote. The top priority at Anderson High School is to provide a safe and secure environment for everyone. Stevens was booked at the Hamilton County Jail and charged with resisting arrest, criminal trespass, and disorderly conduct. A representative for Stevens could not be immediately reached for comment. 
Normally, it's the high schoolers at homecoming that are spiking the punch. Apparently, now the designated drivers are doing so. Your daily dose of weird dark news continues in just a moment. From ScaryCarries.com Missing mother of six is found dead and wrapped in carpet days after vanishing when she went for a date. A missing mother of six was found dead and wrapped in a carpet days after she allegedly vanished on a date with a mystery man in Oklahoma. Michaela Faye Meath Byers, 30, was last seen on September 15 getting into a white Chevrolet pickup truck with tinted windows, driven by a man who she was possibly going on a date with. Five days later, police confirmed that Meath Byers had been found dead a few miles from her home in Macomb. The circumstances of her death are still coming to light. Meath Byers was determined to have left her home with the man at around 5.30 p.m. on a Friday on her own accord. He said the man was white and had a bald head with a dark beard but had not yet been identified. She was not seen after that, so investigators with drones and search dogs scoured the area. It was her cousin who discovered her body on September 20th, wrapped in a waterlogged old piece of carpet in an almost four-foot drainage culvert in a creek running under a road. Mr. Dinwiddie said Miss Meath Byer's family was at the scene where they discovered her body. There was no suspected injuries to her body that authorities could determine without an autopsy. The body was confirmed to be Meath Byer's by medical examiners. Mr. Dwindy said the investigation is still ongoing. They're waiting for the medical examiner's office to certify her cause of death. The office also had people that they're interviewing but have no confirmed suspects yet. If you have any information regarding this case, please contact your local police department. And there's a link to this story in the show notes. From UPI Probably Haunted Sign Posted Outside Funeral Home for Sale a funeral home listed for sale in Massachusetts is getting attention due to a sign posted outside the property stating it is probably haunted. Listing agent Erica Crystal Euchre posted the sign outside the Turgeon Funeral Home in Millsbury, which is currently listed for $769,000. It's been standing for many years and certainly has some history to go with it, Euchre told a local TV station. I'm not sure if it truly is haunted, but given its age, I suppose it is a possibility. The house was constructed as a single-family home in 1850 and was converted into a funeral home in 1948. The listing states the property could easily be converted back into a single-family home. The building, which features three bedrooms and five bathrooms, has been owned by the same family since the 1940s. Although, if you move in, it might already be crowded. From the Daily Voice, DoorDash driver gets dunked in Middleton after finding a hole in mass GPS system. A DoorDash driver on a Dunkin' Donuts run in Essex County crashed into a body of water because their GPS gave them bad directions, they told the police. The unnamed driver called authorities just after 11.30 a.m. on Friday, September 22, after they splashed down in a large pool of water, Middleton police said. Officers found the driver on Kenny Road with the Dunkin' Donuts order in hand. The driver said they were making a delivery to Mill Street in Middleton when their GPS led them down a dirt road and they somehow ended up hitting the water. The car was still running when police found it partially submerged. Authorities towed it from the water, and officials do not believe it leaked any harmful chemicals into the water. Paramedics took the driver to Beverly Hospital after they said they needed medical attention. Authorities said the driver would be charged with negligent operation of a motor vehicle, and police filed a request for immediate threat license suspension with the RMV. I'll let you make your own joke about donuts and police, but I do find it interesting that nowhere here does it even mention Google Maps might get a slap on the wrist for this. Go to the end of the road and turn left and right and then right. At roundabout, take the second exit. Roundabout? There is no roundabout. Don't raise your voice at me. I'm not. I'm, I'm just saying I can't concentrate when you shout at me. Don't walk away when I'm talking to you. Don't you dare walk away when I'm talking to you. From OddityCentral.com Museum Employees Swaps Painting with Fakes Sells Originals at Auction A German museum employee was recently arrested for reportedly swapping several paintings with fake copies and selling the originals to fund a lavish lifestyle. Due to Germany's strict privacy laws, the identity of the 30-year-old former employee of the Deutsches Museum in Munich has not been disclosed to the public, 
but it has been reported that he admitted to replacing at least four paintings with copies in the period that he worked there, 2016 to 2018. He allegedly sold the work of art at several auctions, using the money to pay off debts and then buy luxury goods, including a Rolls-Royce and expensive wristwatches. The auction house involved in the sale of three of the stolen paintings said that it simply wasn't possible to identify them as stolen property, adding that it collaborated with authorities during the investigation. The defendant shamelessly exploited the opportunity to access the storage rooms and sold valuable cultural assets in order to secure a high standard of living for himself and to show off, the court heard from prosecutors. The unnamed museum employee stole a work of art called The Tale of the Frog Prince by Franz von Stuck and replaced it with a fake and put the original up for auction. He told the auction house that the artwork had belonged to his grandparents or great-grandparents and managed to earn almost 50,000 euros or $52,000 in cash after the auction fees were deducted. He subsequently swiped another piece of art, The Wine Test by Eduard von Gutzner and also Two Girls Collecting Wood in the Mountains by Franz von Defreger and sold them at the same auction house, earning tens of thousands of euros. He also stole Dirndl by Franz von Defreger and tried selling it through a different Munich auction house, but that did not sell. In the end, the 30-year-old man managed to avoid prison time but was handed a 21-month suspended sentence and ordered to pay back the museum more than $64,000. In its ruling, the court argued that it had taken into account the man's confession and the fact that he did show genuine remorse. He said he acted without thinking, the court ruling read, he can no longer explain his behavior today. The employee's thefts were discovered when a Providence researcher noticed that one of the pieces was quite a clumsy copy despite being in the correct frame, which suggested that somebody had swapped it with a copy. Further investigation of the museum's storage depots resulted in the discovery of three other missing paintings. Our staff are all very reliable, but there's not much you can do if one employee harbors criminal energy. He had no previous record, and there was no way of knowing he was capable of this when we hired him," according to a museum spokesperson. Honestly, though, with what passes off as art nowadays, I'm surprised anybody noticed anything. Now, you too can own beautiful soil paintings from around the world. Papa Brown's finds great pieces at low prices and brings them to you for pennies on the dollar from Indonesia, Persia, the Orient, India, and even from our own backyard, literally. America. Papa Brown's soil paintings, not just for the stinking rich anymore. More of your daily dose of weird dark news is coming up. From the smoking gun, drug dealer calls cops to report a theft. When working in the field of illegal drug sales, it's never a good idea to contact police to complain that a customer robbed you. Cops say that Eric Thomas, 33, called police in reference to a theft Friday in Largo, a city in the Tampa Bay, Florida area. Upon being contacted by officers, Thomas stated that he was selling marijuana and somebody stole $10 from him while attempting to sell it. While reporting the theft, Thomas had 11 baggies of pot in his hands, according to the arrest affidavit. In the free state of Florida, it remains illegal to possess marijuana with the intent to sell it. Thomas made spontaneous statements about getting robbed while attempting to sell the marijuana, said Officer Ricardo Barrales, who noted that Thomas was holding more than 40 grams of pot when collared. During a post-arrest search of Thomas, cops reportedly found two baggies containing cocaine in his wallet as well. Thomas was charged with a pair of drug felonies and booked into the county jail, where he remains locked up in lieu of $7,000 bond. In the past year, Thomas has been convicted of marijuana, cocaine, and battery counts. In a pending case, Thomas has been accused of possessing seven Ziploc baggies of marijuana. The pot was discovered when Thomas emptied his pockets into a clear plastic tray at a court security checkpoint. Thomas, who reportedly admitted the pot was meant for sale, was at the Pinellas County Justice Center last month to see the clerk of courts. And now he might get to see the clerk of jail cells. This is your brain on drugs, people. And now with the station editorial, here's Connie Suvater, friend of the general manager. Okay, so I'm Connie Suvater, 
and today I'd like to talk about drugs in school. I'm opposed to them, and I'm sure I'm not the only one. Drugs in school are bad. They don't belong there, and if we're not careful, someone could get hurt. Let's just get rid of drugs in school. Johnny Cash understood this when he said, Because you're mine, I walk the line. So let's just stop this drugs in school nonsense. That's my opinion. I'm sorry about all the yelling, but somebody had to step forward and say this. Take care. Find links to all the stories I've covered in this episode in the show notes. And find more strange, disturbing, and sometimes humorous news in the Weird News and blog at WeirdDarkness.com. 